I have been abusing pain medication for over four years now, um, prescription pain medication. My husband and my family don't know that I'm taking opioid pain medication. First of all, thank you for saying that out loud. I'm really proud of you. What in the world's going on? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show, where we take real calls from real people who are struggling with their mental health, with their marriages, with daily decisions, daily choices, with their emotional health, with their kids, with a million things. All of us are going through nonsense in this world that's kind of got a little, gone a little mad. And this show is, is designed to be a light in the darkness. And my promise is I'm going to sit with you in the darkness and we're going to figure out the next step. We're going to create a path out of this thing. And it might be a long, long journey or it might be a light switch, but we're going to figure out how we can get some light back in the darkness. If you want to be on the show, go to johndeloney.com slash ask, A-S-K, johndeloney.com slash ask. And huge news, pre-order for my brand new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life. If you've been ride or die with our show, you know I've been talking about this for a long, long time. The way we are handling mental health, chronic burnout, stress, all the stuff that we hear everywhere, all over the place, what we're doing is not working. And this book is a deep dive into what the problem is. And more importantly, what do we do next? What is the path out of here? In this book, I've distilled it down to make it as simple as possible. It's not a textbook. I am a super nerd. This is the least nerdy book I could write. It's not full of a million citations. It's not full of a million big, fancy, you know, PhD words. I, I, I tried to make this as simple as possible for moms and dads like you and like me who just want to do better for our kids, who want to have some peace in our lives. This book is for you. So go to johndeloney.com, 20 bucks for the pre-order, and you get a whole bunch of other stuff, including an automatic download of a talk I gave recently on one of the chapters in the book, which I'm just super hyped about. So. Go to johndeloney.com and check it out. Okay, right before we came on, you used to wrap houses when you were a kid? Yeah, we used to go, for those that don't know what that means, toilet papering houses. Right, and just, just if you don't know what that means, you just get like 5, 10, or in me and my friend's case, 90 rolls of toilet paper, and you throw them as high as you can up in the trees, and then they, gravity brings it down, and then you just keep throwing it back up until it's just covered. Just Google wrapping houses or toilet papering houses. It's, it was amazing. It was an art form back yeah. then. Yeah, and the best was if it would rain overnight. Uh, and then the next morning, your mom was like, clean it up. Yeah, so it was awesome. incredible. But so a friend of mine and I, we had this like war going on my senior year of high school where pretty much every other weekend, one of us was doing wrapping the other's house. And my crowning achievement was I forked his entire front yard which means you take plastic forks and just in a row, the entire front yard, his parents were not pleased, as you can imagine. <laughs> I figure it was free aeration. People pay for that. Um, we would take them and stick them in and snap them off. Oh, see, that's just mean. Because we were mean. That that's was just, just not cool. Because that ruins your, your lawnmower Well, it just shoots out your lawnmower like missile. It was not yeah, cool, dude. Yeah, we took not, it way too far. At least we did it like all... Now, I did have a friend of mine that did this to me. They went and got every... Um, like election sign, it was election season, and put them all in yep. our front yard. And every we used to do all the uh, real estate signs, yeah, and, and put five thousand within the real estate. For, I get it; they got upset. Yeah, but I did get in trouble when I put um, shaving cream on his yard and I killed part of his front yard. Oh, that's his parents were pleased. Nope, that's just the cost of doing business. That's what I figured. We went way, way, way too far one year, and we just kind of killed it for everybody. My two, <laughs> my two favorite moments. One time, my dad. Um, I was a kid and I was asleep and some, some teenagers were wrapping our house and my dad woke me up and he goes, Hey, get up, come here. And I didn't know what it was. And he goes, come here. And I could see something was up and we, he like was crouched down and we snuck out the back door and I was, I thought it was so cool, man. And he handed me the hose and he goes on the count of three and he had a huge bucket full of water and he goes, one, too, and he started whistling and screaming, and we ran around the house. And I thought I was the coolest guy of all time ever. And my other one was my dad had a great friend who's an attorney named Tim Power. I'm calling his name out on this show. Guy's awesome. <laughs> Guy's awesome. Tim Power. To say we annihilated his house is the understatement. I think we had an entire case of toilet paper, which back then was 90 rolls. 
It looked like it had a blizzard across his house. And it was one that we left and I was pretty proud of myself. Like, like that's going to be so awful to clean up. Like I wouldn't want to be them. We went home and there was literally no reason. This is unprovoked. This is just me and a couple of teenage buddies. Like, let's just take a guy who's really great to us. And it's a good friend with my dad. And let's just ruin his entire week. And so we went and toilet papered his house obnoxiously. Next morning, like at eight o'clock, I have a knock on my door. Doo, 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 and it's him. It's Tim Power. I was like, oh, you're dead. You got busted. And he goes, hey, man, I'm in a real bind. Can you help me out? And I was like, what happened? He goes, my house got like well done wrapped last night. I have this thing coming up. Can I hire you to go clean it up? And I was like, yes, you can. So I cleaned it up and he paid me a bunch of money. It was awesome. And I waited like five years, maybe even longer than that. In fact, Tim, this is it. This is me confessing. This is my confession. I'm just telling you, that was me. It was me. And he paid for it. Quite impressive. It was good. It makes me sad that teenagers today, because of doorbell cameras and all that, won't get to do that. If you wrapped a house today, they would call the yeah, cops. Because it used to be, it wasn't like you did it to people you didn't like. It was people you liked. It that was your was friends. so fun. And if you woke up in your house with toilet paper, you were like, yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. We had police officers drive by. They'd honk the horn. They'd oh, turn their yeah. lights on. I have run at high, hidden bushes from police officers. And it's yeah. It's like a crowning achievement if your house gets TP. It was. Honestly. It was like a... Oh my God, I have friends. I got friends. People yeah. love me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll kiss somebody one day. It's going to happen, Kelly. You keep wishing, Kelly. It's coming. All right, let's go out to Reno, Nevada and talk to, is it Lila? Lila. Lila. What's up, Lila? Hi, how are you doing, Doctor? We are partying. How about you? Um, I'm okay. Kind of like nervous. Can't believe I'm on the show. Oh, don't be nervous at all. The show's not even that great. What's up? So, um... I I kind of like had a question. Um, maybe uh, hopefully you can help me figure it out how to kind of like control my feelings. Um, I get um, I feel like down easy. Like if if I text someone and it don't text me back, I like I start imagining the wars. Um, and I start shopping stuff randomly. Like whenever I feel like I'm not good enough, I start buying stuff randomly. It's not extremely like thousands of dollars, but I don't like it. Like I buy stuff that I don't need. And then I'm like, I shouldn't buy it. Why did I buy it? And then I start like, um, kind of like making me feel even worse because like I'm spending money that there's no need. And so I like, I start feeling down and then I don't know. Yeah. You you almost get into that shame cycle, right? Where you buy something that yeah. you know you don't need, but it makes you feel a little bit better. And then you feel guilty that you bought it. And then you feel ashamed when it shows up. And then, you get low, and the only way to make you feel better is that you think is you go buy something else, and the whole thing starts exactly. over again. Yeah. So it's it's like a circle, and it, it yeah. never gets to the point to feel good. Sure. And I'm like, it's like I, I listen a lot to your show and a lot of shows like, um, you know, to self improvement or minimalist and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know I don't need this, but so, at the moment I feel like, oh, this is what's gonna make me happy. But I know it doesn't. Yeah. Well, I'm really, really grateful that you called. That means a lot. Um. Let's back out a little bit. I want to. I'm going to talk more about feeling low. How long have you felt low? It's it's a it's a, it's not all the time. Um, and that's another thing that I feel ashamed of. I'm, I'm married, and my husband is amazing. He knows all this. Like I, I I can talk to him about this kind of stuff, and he's always there for me. Um, so I oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm hold on. My, hey, okay. You, you, I need you to hear me say this. It's okay if you if you get down, and it's okay to feel anxious. You're not there's not something wrong with you. You're not broken. It doesn't mean you're a bad wife. It doesn't mean you don't love your husband. It doesn't mean your husband's not great. Here's the deal. It just simply means your body's trying to get your attention for some reason. And what we want to do is we want to get to what's my body trying to tell me? And you hear how there's no shame in that. There's no guilt in that. It's just pure curiosity. I wonder. I wonder why that. I wonder why that is. And I would wonder, do you have some girlfriends in your life, some women in your life that you go do things with, that you hang out with? Or are you are, yeah. are you lonely? No, 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 I do. Tell me about them. Um, they're, they're great. Like, uh, I'm not, I'm not the one though that if I had a problem, I call. 
I usually, I just talk to my husband. Um, but we hang out, like, often. Like, I mean, we had different friends, like, you know, work and outside of work and stuff like that. So Do you have little ones? I hang out with, I'm sorry? Do you have kids? Do you have little ones? Uh, yeah, one. Tell me about them. Um, she's, she's good. She's great. You know, she's a kid. She have, uh, her moment <laughs> that the patience, it's a little bit push, yeah. but she's a great kid. That's she, awesome. um, she had a good hour. So I remember it was a huge moment for me when I started tracking backwards. For me, I think I've talked about this on the show all the time. Um, I don't have a lot of impulse shopping sometimes. Um, but not usually. Usually my issue is I go to junk food. I go to, go to trash, like unhealthy food. And it was such a revelation to me when I realized that almost every time I go, I'm either super exhausted and there's a lot of real clear literature that suggests the more tired you are, the more hungry and the, and the poorer the food choices you make. Almost always there was some sort of relational issue. I was frustrated with my wife. My kids were driving me crazy. I was super annoyed with somebody at work and I found myself mindlessly grabbing junk food. And I'm sure I could go down a rabbit hole and figure out the physiology. I didn't really care what the physiology was. I just needed to know that the trigger had something to do with when my body felt exposed or lonely or disconnected from folks. So going along those same lines, I would ask you, the times you can think back to when you have felt the need to sit down and impulse shop, to buy something, what usually starts that domino, hits that first domino that just rolls the rest of them down? Um, if I can, like, if I, like, think about it, it's usually um, either, yeah, I'm stressed at work or I've had an argument with my husband or with my kid or I feel like... And, I don't know why. Like, I feel like if if I had a friend and, and, and I text, you know, and it's, I know everyone's busy, everyone has their life, but in my head, it's like, if they don't text me within a few hours, I was like, oh, are they mad at me? Did I did anything? Did I? And I'm like, and I keep going, like, I don't remember saying or doing anything, but I'm like, oh, but maybe I did and I didn't realize. And then that's when I feel like the anxiety. And then I'm like, I just got online and I start just looking around on things to try to distract my mind. And then I end buying things that I don't need. And I just, you know, they look good. This look cool. I can do this with this. Yeah. Oh, of course. So, I mean, you, man, you could talk yourself into rationalizing any of those things in the moment. Right. So I want to back out and give you six, six categories. I want you to look at in your life. Okay. And, um, you don't have to write these down cause they'll be available when the show comes out. But, um, the six categories I would line out for you is the first thing I would sit down and I would ask you to choose reality to, to like really be honest about the reality of several situations. Okay. And you, for any number of reasons, and I'm sure you and I could talk for a long, 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 long time, but you have in your disposition that you're going to make sure everybody sees a beautiful picture, even if things are really hard behind that picture. Is that true? Yes. Yes. I have a feeling that if your husband was really mean to you one day, nobody would ever, ever, ever know. Or if you were really, really exhausted and frustrated with your kid, no one would ever, ever know. Because you have become so gifted over the course of time, probably to, to because you had to, at smiling and saying, oh, sure, it's fine. Everything's fine. Because you don't want to be a burden to anybody. And so I'd ask you to look at reality. Like, what is the state of your marriage for real? What's the state of your workplace for real? What's your state of your friendships for real? Being a parent, your relationship with your parents. I want you to look at the landscape of the relationships in your life. That's number one. And your workplace, all that stuff. Number two is I want you to begin to choose freedom, to look for places where other people are deciding what you do. That might be if you owe money to somebody. That might be in-laws that are making demands of you. That might be a calendar that is super full and out of control. 
that might be uh, any number of things that are other people are demanding of you and you don't get to drive in the driver's seat of your own life. The third one is connection. We talked about that earlier about relationships. You might be great on that one. Awesome. The fourth one is mindfulness and we'll, we'll get there in a second. Really mindfulness is simply the gap between um, that feeling I want to do this thing and actually doing it. Mindfulness is I'm, I'm having this thought but I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go through with it. Right. And then the next one is belief. This idea that you've got to have something anchored into something bigger than you are. Do you have a faith, you have a faith belief system of any kind? Um, yeah. I mean, kind of, I'm not a hundred percent practice, but yeah. That's okay. Uh, Yeah. I'm not going to prescribe one to you. I'm just going to say you have to have some sense that I am not alone in the universe. I'm not, I'm not a balloon that somebody cut the string and I'm just floating off aimlessly all by myself because that body is going to always be anxious because it's going to be untethered no matter how, how good it is. And the last one is you got to choose health and healing. That might be sleep. That might be going to counseling for the first time and dealing with some childhood trauma. That might be, um, any number of, I got to deal with this nagging knee injury or back injury. I just got to, I got to get well and whole. I got to quit drinking 45 energy drinks in the morning before I go to work or whatever the thing is. Here's what, here's the picture I want you to have. If your life is a cup and it's already filled to the brim with all these things I just talked about, your body's lonely. you got a chaotic schedule. you got a bunch of demands all over uh, on you all the time. Your relationships aren't solid. You're untethered. You're not well. Then when something happens, like your boss hollers at you or somebody cuts you off in traffic or your husband is snaps at you, there's no, there's no place for that extra water to go when it gets poured into the glass and it just spills over everywhere. But if you keep the water in that glass really low, then when life happens, when somebody pours water in it, it's got plenty of space to absorb that water, to, to, to capture that water, right? And so more practically speaking, how serious are you about stopping impulse shopping? How seriously do you just want to quit? 100% like every time I bought something, I always like, and I look, and I, I, I feel it's got better. Um, I used to like almost every month buy shoes, clothes, this, that. And now, like, I feel like okay, it's been months now. But there's days that it's just I look at it and I said no, and then I go back to the website, and then I go back to the website, and I keep like no, I don't need it, and then eventually I'm buying. So I would tell you, you're gonna have to do what I had to do several years ago, which is I had to give my debit card to my wife. I had to take it out of my possession because I didn't control myself. I couldn't control myself. And mine was always taking people to lunch. I'll, I got it. I'll, let's go to lunch. Let's go to lunch. Let's go to lunch. I'll, get, I'll go get coffee. Let's go grab dinner. And so it wasn't shoes and shirts as much as it was. I was trying to buy connection with people because I didn't think people would want to hang out with me just to hang out. And so I had to take radical steps. I disconnected Amazon Prime. I didn't have access to it. I changed the code. I didn't have access. I couldn't get in. And I didn't have my debit card, so I couldn't just go buy things willy-nilly. I had some cash in my wallet, and that's what I used to spend. And when it was gone, it was gone. But there's some really easy steps you can take to make it to where I can't, you can't just buy stuff. The harder thing will be being very mindful. When you get the impulse to stop and pull out a small little binder, a small little notebook that you might get at like Walgreens or something like that. And just write down, what is my body trying to protect me from? What is my body trying to numb out from? And probably what you're going to find is you're having problems at work. You're exhausted. Your husband is amazing, but you could really use a lot of, a lot of work at home with the kids because you're working full time too. It can be any number of those things in those six categories, but your body's trying to just shut the system down because the, the glass is full. You're can't ta- you can't take any more. And it just says, hey, let's throw this thing into neutral and we're going to head off this way and just buy some stuff. Somebody else might be, might be cutting. Somebody else might get another drink and another drink and another drink. Somebody else might go to pornography. Somebody else might go to any number of things that we're going to do just to numb out. And I'll tell you the same thing I tell everybody, Lila. Hey, thank you so much for calling. 
Um, hang on the line here. I'm going to send you a copy of my brand new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life. Um, we didn't even mean to set it up this way, but it's it's almost just a perfect handoff for you. So I'm going to send you a copy of the book. Um, but I tell everybody, you are worth not living a numbed out life. You are you are created for more than that. You're put here on earth for more than just to band it over how you feel, what you wanted, what you think, what you need, and just go, <sighs> you're worth more than that. Your life is worth more than that. Your marriage is worth more than that. Your time with your kids and your friends are worth more than that. Your time spent at work is worth more than that. So, Lila, I'll ask you, I'll ask everybody listening, don't settle for a numbed out life. It's worth the work to head into the storm and ask your body, what are you trying to protect me from? What are you trying to numb me out from? What are you trying to distract me from? And I got to head right into the middle of the storm because that's where the light is. That's where the healing is. Thank you so, so much for the call, Lila. I'm so, I'm so grateful that you call. I'm proud of you for calling. Um, hang on the line. We'll get you hooked up. Call anytime, anytime. Everybody, you're worth a peaceful, non-anxious life. We'll be right back. Hey, Deloney here. All right, it's time to declutter. You got a treadmill covered in dust. You got magazines from five years ago piled up in the corner, a garage you can't even park in. And all that clutter and mess can lead to anxiety, to just feeling burned out and overwhelmed. And when you hang on to the wrong things for too long, it can lead to something else bad sleep. That's right. You might have the same nasty, lumpy mattress you've had for decades just sitting up there. Gross. Your sleep is way too important for that. And you're way too important. One of the easiest things you can do to improve your physical and mental health is invest in refreshing sleep. And that includes having a great new mattress like a dream cloud. And right now, DreamCloud is making it a no-brainer to upgrade your mattress with an offer just for our listeners. 40% off of all mattresses plus an additional $50 in savings. It's time to start prioritizing your sleep. Clear out all the clutter, get rid of that old mattress, and go to dreamcloudsleep.com and enter promo code John Deloney. That's dreamcloudsleep.com with code John Deloney. All right, we're back. Let's go out to Baltimore, home of the wire, and talk to the great Melissa. What's up, Melissa? Hey, Dr. John. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. It's an honor to get to talk to you today. Well, thank you for calling. How can I help? Um, so I guess I'm going to cannonball in, um, <laughs> start off <laughs> saying something <laughs> That I've never said out loud, and I guess I'll say it out loud to all 18 listeners. Okay, I'm, um, I'm going to stop you before you do it, okay? This is kind of my yeah. rule of thumb. When anybody okay. says, I've never said this before, yeah, I always want to stop them and make sure I'm the right guy. Okay. Am I the right guy? I think so. Okay. I think so. If you're doing anything illegal, I still have to hold you accountable for that. Is that cool? That's cool. Nothing illegal. <laughs> okay. All right. So All right. if you, if you're, if you're totally comfortable and for everybody listening, anytime somebody says, I've never told anybody this, but I need to tell you something, stop. Because if they tell you something, you might have to act on it. Okay. So Melissa, I'm trusting you and mm -hmm. I'll promise I'll sit with you. Go for it. Um, I have been abusing pain medication for over four years now, um, prescription pain medication. Um, I had a previous problem with it in my 20s. Um, I ended up going to treatment. I was clean for five years. Um, and then about 10 years ago, I was in a car accident and injured my spine pretty bad. Um, ended up having to have spinal surgery um, and have been in pain management for about, yeah, four, four years now. Um, my husband and my family don't know that I'm taking opioid pain medication. Uh, I've never told them, I think because of the stigma of what happened, you know, when I was in my twenties, when I didn't have legitimate pain, um, but I live with chronic pain every day of my life now. 
Um, and I just, I, I'm ashamed, um, in a way, but at the same time, I feel justified a little bit, but I'm constantly beating myself up over it because I am constantly running out of my pain medication early and everything is great until that point. You know, I have energy. I do well at work. Um, I participate in my life. You know, I can concentrate on things, but then as soon as that prescription runs out, everything comes crashing down and it's like, I just crawl into a black hole for, you know, as long as it is until the next time, you know, I am able to, to get my prescription refilled. Um, okay. Can I, can I tell yeah. you a few things that are hard? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for saying that out loud. I'm really proud of you. I would hug you if you were sitting here and I probably wouldn't say anything <laughs> for the next five or 10 minutes. I just sit here with you. Thank you. How did that feel saying that out loud? Um, out of body kind of experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll probably feel some instant relief and then the shame waters will slowly start circulating back through and a little bit to fill up that space. I want yeah. you to know I'm proud of you, okay? For just Thank for saying you. that out loud. Here's some hard truths that you know, mm -hmm. um, but it's just gotten a little bit hazy. Your family knows. They may not know exactly what, but they know. And that idea that you can focus and everything is better and I become more of a laser. That's the addiction talking again. Yeah. Because it's not right. Because I promise you, your colleagues are like, man, what is up? I promise you. And so there's this moment. What, what, what made you say, I've got to, I've got to get, I've got to say this out loud. I've got to, I've got to do something that different. Something happened. Um, Nothing happened. I just feel like I've been doing this dance for a while where, you know, I find the gift of desperation to stop and then I just don't have, you know, the willpower. And then I think of like the fact that I do have legitimate chronic pain, but I need help with holding myself accountable because obviously I'm not doing it. <laughs> well, and you can have chronic pain that's managed in different ways than just. Yeah throwing opioids at it, right? Um, mm -hmm. All right, so let's walk through this together. You call a meeting tonight with your husband and you take him out and you say, I have to have a hard conversation with you. And you say, I've been using for four years and we both know that I've got these prescriptions, but um, I'm burning through the prescriptions. I'm even getting some other ones from another doctor, from friends. Um, I've reached a point where I can't control this. What happens then next? Um, I fear that he would never look at me the same way again because I think it's not so much the using, but the lying mm -hmm. and the hiding things and the betrayal, like the betrayal that I think would really hit him harder than anything else. And I'm just terrified that if I have that conversation, if I, yeah, that he would never look at me the same way again and that it might end up ruining our marriage. What's the chances yeah. he reaches over, gets up from where he is and comes and hugs you and holds you so tight you can't hardly breathe? Um... I honestly don't see that happening. Okay. What if you told him, I'm going to tell you something and when it's over, it's going to be hard for you, but I need you to get up and come over and sit by me and just hug me and not say anything for a minute. And if you told him, I'm embarrassed about the lies, I'm embarrassed about the shame, but I'm sick. And we've been through this before and I got to go through it again. I think um, it's probably writing all that stuff down and reading that out in some shape, form, or fashion. But one of the most common things I hear on the front end of somebody coming clean is, 
I'm afraid everybody's going to do X, Y, and Z. And it just doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes, yeah, people react poorly or they, re- they make it about them and all that. Yeah. But sometimes they don't. And let me tell you this. You know me on, if you listen to this show, I'm always, dude, I, I want to go to the ends of the earth to try to save marriages because I think marriage is a beautiful thing. But I'd rather your marriage, I'd rather y'all go separate ways than you die. And you know how this ends. And you got little ones too, right? I don't actually. No kids? Okay, we, um, good. Yeah. Okay. No kids and not planning on kids. Okay. Just us. When you use before the, 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 the pain, what were you cut? What were, what were you duct taping over? Um, just general anxiety, social anxiety, um, just feeling. I don't know, a lack of self-confidence. You know, there wasn't anything, there wasn't any major event, any trigger. I didn't have, you know, any trauma in my childhood. I, I mean, legitimately had a very good childhood. And I have two loving parents who, you know, would do absolutely anything for me. Um, and I think it just, my marriage, um, all right, let me say something really harsh, okay? Yeah. I question how strong the bind the bounding the binding is in your marriage if you think you come to him in a moment of illness and he bails. Either that's the addiction talking or your marriage is 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 not a secure bond. It's not yeah. a secure attachment. I think it's more of the addiction talking because I mean, when I'm not having this kind of conversation and I just kind of think, think about it, I mean, he, he's always told me, you know, that he's in for the long haul. He's not, he's never going to leave me. You know, he believes in just marriage as an institution. And I just like, I don't, I don't think that he would actually leave. I think what I'm more afraid of is, like I said, him just never looking at me the same way again and just going through the motions and me not being able to. So, so don't dress rehearse tragedy. Things. You're dress rehearsing tragedy. Don't invent problems that haven't happened yet and try to solve them in the present. Yeah. Give him an opportunity to step up and Give him a roadmap to what that looks like. Here's the truth. You've been through this before. Mm-hmm. Getting off this is brutal. Yeah. Going to AA again, which you got to do, is brutal. Yeah. Going through this process will be very difficult, and you're worth every second of it. Have you listened to, um, if you haven't already, I would love for you to go listen to Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard and his co-host Monica. And the episode is called Day 7. Okay. And his claim to fame was 15 years sobriety. And he was a mentor for countless people. He was a sponsor for countless people. Then he had an accident. And he had to reckon with starting over because he used again and started hiding it. And it's one of the most beautiful, heartbreaking, hard, but truly extraordinary pictures of what this actually looks like. Yeah, that all sounds too familiar. I want you to I want you to listen to the episode because his friend Monica holds him accountable and she says, I love you in the same, in the same conversation. And there's ownership and there's accountability and there's heartbreak and there's shame and there's forgiveness and the whole thing. It's a beautiful picture of it in real time. 
but it really applies here. But I want you to remember two important things. Number one, secrets will kill you. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so you got to have this conversation sooner rather than later. The second thing is you're worth being well and you're worth being sober. Will you commit to having this conversation with him? Yeah, I will. I have to. I know I have to. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. So I want you to listen to that episode, Day 7. We'll see if we can find it and link it in the show notes. It's been a year or two um, since it came out. Um, And feel free to give me a call. Feel free to have him give me a call on the back end after you have this conversation, okay? You can both call into the show, talk to you both at the same time. Um, I want you, when you sit down with him, to already have a plan, like, I'm going to a meeting in the morning. I I don't want it to just be an open-ended thing where he's kind of off untethered all of a sudden and also like i said give him a a path back tell him i i I know i'm so full of shame right now i can hardly keep my eyes open i just need to know that you love me and will you hug me yeah and tomorrow when we wake up i would love it if you made breakfast and i'd love it if you drove me down to my meeting or i'd love it if we had coffee together and we didn't talk about it and then i'm going to go to the meeting and you ask me about how the meeting went I'm actually going to a meeting tonight. Good for you. So maybe after the meeting, you tell them. And maybe after yeah. you get a sponsor tonight, you have to get somebody's number tonight. You got somebody you can call after the meeting. Because it means it might be hard. It might go awful. Yeah. But it has to happen, right? It does. Because, yeah, I, I know, like you said, I know how this ends. Yeah. I've seen it happen to too many of my friends over the years. That's right. But on the other side of it, I've got some friends who are sober and their families are incredible and they laugh a lot and they're silly and funny and they have good marriages and they've got good jobs. So there's light on the other side too. And make no mistake, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Opioids are a demon, man. They will hang on your soul. They're tough. They're tough, 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 tough. There's biochemical reasons for it. They're tough. got to have a group of people go with you. You're worth being well, my sister. I'm so, so proud. You call anytime. Have your husband call anytime. Y'all call together. I'll walk with you as long as you'll have me. Let me know how this conversation goes. Let me know how tonight's meeting goes. I'm so proud of you. We'll be right back. Good folks. Slowing down is a critical aspect of mental health. Calming music, prayers, meditation, they're all great ways to find peace. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Deloney today to get three months of Hallow for free. Hallow.com slash Deloney. All right, let's roll out to Princeton, New Jersey and talk to the great and powerful Conrad. What's up, Conrad? Hey, Dr. John. What up? Uh, Just rocking on to the break of dawn. Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? How we doing? I'm doing all right. All right, let's let's get to it, dude. How can I help? Uh, so I'm really looking about how do I go about getting my friends back together or just to figure out how to navigate our lives moving forward. I, I've had the same core group of friends for the last 15, 20 years, and uh, I love them all. They're all amazing folks. But uh, in the past few years, there's been like a rift in the group, and it all really came to a head a week ago. I was getting everyone together, just wanted to treat everybody to dinner and you know have a good time with everybody. And it was made clear that uh, some folks didn't want to be there. They just flat out didn't want to be there if certain folks were we're coming along. Um, so there's this huge rift between everyone. Uh, I'm still friends with everyone, but it sort of put me in the middle of things. So I really want to respect my friends and their wishes to sort of grow as people, but, uh, respect the other folks involved at the same time. And I'm really struggling with it. Yeah, man. How old are you? Uh, 30 this year. Jeez. 30 this year. Well, congratulations. You're almost dead now. Cause you're really old. Just kidding. <laughs> um, 
Oh, I'm just going to lay it out. It's hard, man, but this is how it happens. <clears throat> this is how it happens. There's friendships that you look back on that mean everything. And we have 10 years, 15 years, 20 years of history, and we did everything together, and they're gone. <clears throat> or one friend hooks up with somebody else's wife, or one friend gets divorced, or one friend you find out abused their kid, or one friend passes away one friend moves and the world of trying to hold it all together as a 30 year old becomes really hard if you've ever listened to this show i'm always talking about how hard it's the worst having kids i mean i'm mean kids having kids is awesome making friends at 35 i don't do enough yeah. job i don't do a good enough job talking about how heartbreaking it is when your friendships change at 30 yeah, it's it sort of, I'm, because I still talk to everyone, and it was like, you know, the, just this week we saw some folks, and they were like, oh, do you still talk to so-and-so? And it's like, I'm in this weird position, because it's like, yeah, we had dinner a couple nights ago, but they're just not talking to you. Okay, wait, so well, why is, that, why is that a weird, why is that a, a weird position for you? So, you know, it, it's... Because <clears throat> it, it sounds like you have, have positioned yourself as the wedding planner, like a JLo movie. <laughs> and you're like, you're, it's your job to make sure everybody's doing it. And it's your job to love well and be honest with people and to allow yourself to be loved. And so if they have riffs, cool, man, I'm still going to hang out. And if they ever put you yeah. in a position to say, Hey, dude, if you're with them, you're not with me. Then you got a choice to make. I mean, l luckily I have, um, a good, good friend of mine, he, when we were planning this whole thing, he said, listen, um, I just want to be you know, upfront with you. I'm sort of growing as a person. I really don't want to you know, hang out with these folks anymore. It's not my cup of tea. I'm not going to tell you who to hang out with. Um, and like, I appreciated him being so upfront with it. But it's like, it's when friends start asking about, oh, what about this person? What about this person? And it's like, you know, do I, the, the, you know, I should just be honest with them and tell them. No, like, no, oh, no, that's, they, no, you know, no, that's not your story to tell. I would just say, yeah, I'd say they, they that's the part I'm struggling with. Yeah, they didn't make it. Yeah. Ta da. Like, you don't have to give an explanation. <laughs> oh, it's, it, you're right. It is rough because it's like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not the whole group. It's like, you know, a couple folks and then everybody else. That's right. And it's just, I feel like, you know, I was always the person to like include folks and bring them into the fold. But now that it's like this, this distinct division, um, but you're not, you're not, you're not bringing people into the fold. You're trying to, you're, you're, they're trying to leave and you're trying to force them to stay. That's different. There's something about including people who are on the margins, people who are on the outside, people that you think would be great in the mm -hmm. gang. There's another thing when people in the gang are like, Hey, it's run its course for me. I'm out. And you're like, no, 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 no. You gotta stay. You gotta stay. You gotta, you, you gotta, like, we're all gonna, that's a different story. That's you yeah. propping up your picture of what this is supposed to look like, not honoring the person on the margins. Yeah, yeah, I realize yeah, that I, sucks I, the way I just said that. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. It's like, um, I love them and I care about them and I need to honor their wishes, respect man. Respect that they want to grow. Yeah. And yeah, or, or that they think that that's, this guy just sucks, right? It's not even about growth. <laughs> I don't like that dude. He always gets drunk and acts like an idiot or he always hits on my no, wife it's or and whatever. It's, it's, it's rough. Yeah. Um, it's really respecting them and, and respecting their journey with it. Um, and you know, there's no like bad blood. There's no like somebody slept with somebody's wife or something like that, but it's just, you know, people growing as people. And it's like, I guess it's coming to terms with the idea that I had for the future. And like, you know, Oh, we've got, you know, we'll work together and go through like, all right, having kids and doing all that. And like sort of have those people going through it with you and accepting the idea that, that picture that I built for myself is a little different now and that, you know, people are changing and I can't control that. One of my, it's rough. Uh, uh, one of my, one of my favorite people I've ever had the opportunity to be friends with. Um, he was in my wedding. I was, I participated in his, um, I had a bad situation, a housing situation, and I moved into his kitchen. Literally, he got rid of his kitchen table and moved my bed into his kitchen table, in his kitchen. Uh, he's an amazing guy. And we went to, we were young, knuckleheads. We went to a Blink-182 concert well, years ago, years ago. And then I went again recently, and I texted him a picture. 
said, man, I missed this. And he goes, man, me too. That was, that was, those are good times. And if I tell you what, if I called him and said, I really need some help, he would be here in no time. Cause I love him. He loves me. He loves my family. He's friends with my wife. I, I, I love his wife. We're connected. Or we always will be, but it's different now. He's an executive in some big fancy company. We live 17 hours away by car. I'm a YouTuber for God's sake. Like, right. So <laughs> it happened. And if I could do anything to flip that, I, I would. Cause I missed the guy in my life. He's one of the greatest friends a guy could have. And I'm so excited for his professional opportunities and for him and his family and all the things. And I know he has the same for me. And so it's just making peace and grieving what was and making peace with what is. And then I've got to do the hard, scary work of making friends in my local community. And that's terrible. But here we are, right? And that's just one dude, man. There's like multiple guys that like, remember when, remember when, remember when. And here we are. And I wish it wasn't right around 30 when it all happens, but (laughs) that's a pretty common time for people to have their first kid, people to have their first breakup, people to be like, hey, I'm not drinking anymore. Whatever the thing is, I don't go to church anymore. I do go to church. I'm super Jesus freak. Whatever the thing is, it just happens around this time. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a lot of things and it's sort of a new season of life. And uh, I don't know, man, nobody really talks about it. They I mean, don't. You know, with they, the, with the show, thankfully, but <laughs> well, they nobody don't. talks I, about this. Like, hey, things will change. <laughs> I appreciate you calling. Here's what I would tell you to do. Next time somebody, and, and, and bravo to him for having the courage to set a boundary, right? Hey, like, hey man, I'm just, yeah. um, if that guy's going to be here, I'm, I'm just going to bail. It's cool. You'll have a great time. Bravo to him for not being a, a drama queen about it, not not causing a bunch of, if he comes, I'm out. And if you choose him, he didn't do that. He acted like a grown-up, right? So bravo to him and bravo for you for respecting him. And I want you to, when that happens, Literally, this is going to sound cheesy. Put your hand on your body where you feel it. Is it in your chest? Is it in your shoulders? Like when your buddy's like, hey, I'm not going to make it. And you think of that room and only 80% of the gang is there, right? Feel that for a second. Be like, man, I wish everybody would be there. Sucks. And then you blow it out. And you put your hand on your chest and you say, cool, I'm proud of you for making, making a decision. And I'm going to go ahead with a party. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And that's the best you can do. And if somebody says, hey, have you seen so-and-so? Like, yeah, we grabbed dinner the other day. Oh, really? Why aren't they here? Ah, they didn't want to make it. They couldn't make it. There are things going on. That's all you got to do. You don't got to tell other people's stories. But it's mostly you come into terms with people have the right to come and go and they will come and go in your life. And it hurts and it's hard and it's completely normal. And the one thing you can control is I am going to be a person that surrounds myself with friends and community. It's the kind of guy I'm going to be. I'm going to have people. Even when I'm tired, even when I don't want to, I'm going to have people. I'm proud of you, brother. Thanks for calling, man. And thanks for reminding me. I need to talk more about that 28 to 33-year-old season when Everybody kind of starts splintering and moving on. And there's that sense of loss. And, hey, let's keep the text threads going and the memes going. But it's all just not the same. Find some new buddies to invite into the fold and make sure you stay connected to the guy that stepped out. Whew. Sorry the pictures are changing, man. As Blink-182 said, I guess this is growing up. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Dr. John Deloney here. Check it out. My new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, is now available for pre-order. Here's the great news. Anxiety is not the enemy we've been led to believe. I know this because I've walked alongside countless folks over the last two decades, and I've struggled with this too. If you create a life of intentionally living out the six daily choices I've outlined in this book, you're going to be able to better respond to whatever life throws at you. You're going to learn the choices you can make day by day to create a more peaceful, joyful, less chronically stressed, non-anxious life. Plus, when you pre-order my book, I want to give you something to help you today. That's why you'll instantly get my newest talk, Smoke, Fire, and Freedom, that I gave to several thousand folks a few months ago 
where I break down the misunderstandings and myths we believe about anxiety, how to reclaim your freedom, and how to build a non-anxious life. So pre-order Building a Non-Anxious Life today for just 20 bucks at johndeloney.com. All right, we are back. Listen, we have a new segment on the show. And if you've listened to this show for any period of time, you know we're always <laughs> inventing new segments. Most of the time they last um, one segment. But we're going to give this one a go because I'm pretty hyped about this. So we've gotten several emails or calls and uh, around this same theme. And so I'm calling on you listeners. I'm calling on you listeners, A, to pre-order the book, johndeloney.com, shameless plug that I just feel kind of gross that I just did that, but go to johndeloney.com, pre-order the book. And this new um, segment in honor of the great and powerful Taylor Swift is called I'm the problem. Is it me? Question mark. I know she doesn't have a question mark, but alas, people are, are right in and say, Hey, am I the jerk? Am I the idiot? Is this all, is this my fault? And so I would love to keep this thing going. And instead of doing the lyrics of the day, we're just going to end the show with, am I the problem? And I think that would be a blast. What do you say, Kelly? Just make sure you keep them short. Keep them short. Okay. Yeah, yes. because we can't do long ones since it's just in this last segment. So keep them short and make sure you put in there, am I the problem? And then also, after we read it, and we'll all talk about it, then we want our fans to go on to social and to reviews and tell us what they think. What they think. All right. So today, the first installment ever, the first installment ever of Am I the Problem? Is it me? Question mark. <laughs> Is from Kimberly Monks in Utah. Kim writes, Am I the jerk? My husband gets up early to ride his bike before work, usually between 3.40 and 4 a.m.-ish. Yikes. He has a hard time waking up to his alarm. I'm already telling you no. I usually wake up to wake him up to tell him to turn his alarm off. Then there's the snooze. It takes me a lot longer to fall back asleep than he does, so when his snooze keeps going off, I've basically been awake the whole time. I prefer to wake up around 5 to 5.30 for my workout. He then gets upset with me and eventually firmly at, uh, gets upset. He then gets upset with me for eventually firmly asking him to turn off his snooze or put his phone under his pillow or just get up. He interprets the experience as me yelling at him in the morning. You probably are. It is 4 a.m. And then he's in a bad mood and he just won't go because he's a baby. We have serious communication issues, but I can't see how I'm in the wrong here. He <laughs> what a clown. He has slept on a blow-up mattress downstairs the past two nights. He'll show you because he doesn't like waking up mad. So we'll take, uh, we'll take opinions from the booth. I think he wants to be a guy who wakes up at 4 a.m. or 3.40 to ride his bike, but he's not. And... He is just a guy that creates unnecessary noise at 3.40 to 4 a.m. And he likes to tell people, I got up early at 4 to ride my bike this morning. I'm a guy that gets up at 4. You're not. You're a guy that sets his alarm for 4 and then hits snooze and snooze and snooze. And the woman you chose to share a bed with is like, God almighty, can we just sleep in like normal people? So no, I think he's the jerk. And I also think he's acting like a baby for being like, fun, I'm sleeping on my blow-up mattress. I don't want to wake up mad. You don't want to wake up mad? Actually wake up and then get up. Then you wouldn't be mad. Or be say, you know what, Jocko, 4.30 a.m., I concede it. You win. You know who I'm not? David Goggins. I'm just not. So I'm going to sleep until 5.30, which is still way before all of Earth, and I'm going to work out then. Near, near. And then you don't have to be an idiot. And I realize saying someone's an idiot is harsh. But dude, you know why I know? Because this was me, homie. This was me. I'm a bro who gets up at 4 a.m. and I run 48 miles and whatever. And then my sweet wife would just be like, hey, if you set your alarm at 4, will you get up and actually go? And not just lay there and hit snooze and snooze and snooze and snooze until I want to stab you? Not in the back, but in the front so you'll feel it. When you die, like, am I crazy? What do you think? Oh, he's 100% the jerk on this one. <laughs> I would be putting my pillow over his face. 
<laughs> and you listen to enough murder podcasts, they I would never it. figure it out. Exactly. That's right. Jenna, what do you think? Yeah, he's the problem, 100%. He's the problem. I can't believe he said that. I don't like waking up mad. I know, what well, a Well, maybe then don't hit snooze a thousand <laughs> times. <laughs> and by the way, uh, Kimberly Monks, you are 100% are yelling. You know why? Because every rational person would yell if every day of their life an alarm went off at 340 and then at 350 and then at 4 and then at 410 and then 420, everyone would yell. At Gandhi would start yelling at that time. Every major uh, – monks who have vows of silence, they've taken vows of silence for centuries. They would come out of the grave and be like, turn it off. <laughs> You're exactly right. He is the problem, not you. So congratulations. Our first inaugural, am I the problem? In this case, no, it's him. <laughs> it's him. Hey, send these in. Go to johndeloney.com slash ask. Keep them brief and put in the headline, am I the problem? Is it me? I'd love to hear it. And we're going to roll off the ending the show with lyrics of the day. And I'd love to have these, have more and more of these. Take care. Be kind to one another. Stay in school. Don't do drugs, all that stuff. And hey, tell somebody today, look them in the eyes and tell them that you love them and you're grateful for them. I'll see you soon. <laughs>